Hello, uh, welcome to part two of an atmospheric perspective guided drawing. Now, part one hasn't actually been recorded yet. Uh, it was done live in class. I'll do another uh, video of us recreating what we've done in class together. Uh, but this is part two. Now, what we are creating is we are creating a cliffside image. It's actually a combination of two other images that are found on uh, Google image search for atmospheric perspective. But we're taking these two and combining it to create a very interesting composition of our own. Now, what we've done so far is we've set up our horizon line. We've set up a line for the cliff side, and we've set up a line creating this cutout of the cliff that's in shadow. Everything that is towards the left side of our paper is going to be in heavier shadow um, than the right. Now, what we've done so far is we've done created these lines and we've added some vertical lines going between them. And then in between these vertical lines, we've applied little kind of curved shade lines just to add a little bit of contour line into this. So this does not end up becoming flat. Now, the next step that we're going to do in class is we're going to go in and shade kind of the rightest side of these a little bit darker. And I know that overall the left side will be darker for things, but in this cliff, this is mostly shadow. So we've got light reflecting back to onto this cliff side. That's why we can see any detail. And so we're really getting shadows from the left onto these other little uh, details and embankments. So we're just going through and we're adding some shading darker as we get towards this corner. This corner is going to be almost 100% on our pencil, just leaving little bits of detail just to catch the eye. We don't want, we don't want to make anything 100% dark without any sort of contrast there. That contrast, even if it's tiny, will add a lot to our photo or picture. So we're just going through. And after we get all that done, and we'll add more to it now. Right now, I've got this area right here. It's a little bit of a cliff. So I'm going to go very, very dark with this, letting my pencil almost be full pressure. And adding, just almost drawing all the way to the edge. And I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see. Autofocus. Let's get that. Ooh, autofocus is not our friend today. There we go. So just coming in, cleaning up that edge, and then leaving some white spaces as light catches that. Now, one thing I can do if I want to add some little plants coming over this is I can use my eraser, kind of add in a couple plants. And then after I've got those erase lines, I can go in and shade this left side of all of these little plant leaf things are coming over the edge and create a very cool effect like that. That's always fun to add a little bit of life into our drawings, a little bit of nature going on to this landscape. There we go. Maybe put a few more of those in later, but I'm just going to continue this process of shading in darker the right side of this cliff face. Again, everything else on our paper, the left side is going to be the darkest. But in this section, because we've got the shadow coming over, it, this is the way that we're going to do that. Now, we are going to make this top darker. Sorry, autofocus. Uh, we're going to make this top darker, and then it's going to get lighter towards the middle. And then it's going to get darker again towards the bottom, where at the bottom, we're going to have a lot of light reflected to the top. So the darkest part will be the bottom edge. But at the top, because it's in shadow, the darkest part will be at the top edge. So it's going to kind of flip which side we put our shadow on, top or bottom. So just going through 
And this video is really there as just a, uh, a companion piece. If you missed a day or if you just want to see a little bit more of the shading, we're not going to have time to go over the shading as much in class. This is a pretty lengthy process. So, but if you've already got a hand on this, you're welcome to skip ahead. I don't have a time counter right now for when I'm going to work on the next step, but that's okay. So as we're shading, remember, we're going to shade in contour lines. I'm making little curved lines for all of this. I really want, in between these lines I've set up, I want to set up the idea that this is jutting out. And so curves are a great way of setting up the shape of this. Again, not too much detail here in the middle, maybe a couple really dark lines just for some heavy contrast of shadows. But I'm not gonna make the overall section of this very big. In fact, I might just go in, add a few little dark lines just to add some contrast every once in a while adding one of these contour lines a little darker than the rest especially like right here i've got i'm gonna add some shadow right here where i've got a, an embankment that's just jutting out so i'm just going really heavy fading off towards the edge. Maybe a little bit heavier to around this plant to let that kind of pop out. And right now, as I'm shading, I'm just shading in with little circles because I've already got my contour lines. Now it's just a soft shadow on top. If your hand starts cramping, Take a time, take a little bit of break, massage out the hand. Wiggle your fingers. Don't ever push too hard that it starts hurting. Give yourself a break. Drawing is a muscle activity. The more you do it, the longer you can go at it. It's, but if you just need to take breaks every once in a while, that's fine. Just letting some of the light on this little areas of rock that are jutting out a little bit, half in shadows. Okay, adding a little bit more shadow underneath those to create that effect. So right here, I've got this little light spot right just underneath it, going a little heavier shadow. And above it, a little heavier shadow. And that creates a really nice texture. Towards the bottom of this line, I'm going to just use my eraser to soften up this guideline I drew. I don't need that line to be 100% there. It looks a, looks a little artificial. I can go in and add some textured lines coming kind of down. Maybe got some rocks or some roots. If I want to, I can go in and add a little bit of roots over here, kind of overhanging. Maybe there's some plants that we don't see grasping to it. Those little details just really make it. So I'm going up here back towards the edge of my cliff and I'm kind of erasing some of that. Just letting the lines that I had created before define the bottom edge. Okay, so right now I've got a lot of smudges. Go back in with my eraser, clean those up before the next thing. If you clean up your smudges as you go, it ends up being an easier job. Now right up here on this edge, we're going to eventually create some rocks coming towards it. We're just going to take some of the bumps and we're going to make little lines going in, kind of set up some of the terrain. I like to make these a little bit diagonal, set up little kind of cracks in, in the uh, in the ground, let them separate out from each other a little bit. Not, 
just little light lines going in, in a kind of V shape away from, from the edge. We'll do some over here, but we'll make them shorter because they're further away from us. They need to be a little bit shorter and we'll make them a little lighter too. All right, I'm going to leave this alone for a little bit, and I'm going to start focusing on our hillsides. Now, on our hillsides, we're going to start drawing some little choppy lines that follow the direction of our hill. So if this is going this way, this is going to continue going this way. I'm just going to kind of create some different lines that follow the contours of the shape, spacing them out a little bit. And then I'm gonna use those to create little farmland patches on the hill. They don't have to be perfect, but you can just kind of block these out. And this one, it curves up here with this line and curves with this one. This is a fun time that you can think about what you, else might be on the hill. You can think about what might be growing there. And I'm going to continue and I'm going to add some lines that follow the contour. As you see, this curve goes this way, so this line goes that way. I'm going to set these up. I'll, I want the lines to be a little bit closer together the further up the hill they are. So a little bit wider down here. It's going to help force the perspective. So on this one right here, they're going to be even a little bit wider. Might only get about four in there, and that's fine. And just for the fun sake, I mean, this one little one's going to be tiny and have little ones going that way. Just a little bit different. Now. If you want, we can add a little tractor or something to that later. But we're going to go in, and we're going to create contour lines bumping up in between each of these lines on the farmland. Little bit of curves, just little curves, like little uh, kind of rainbows, just going back and forth. Little tiny ones here. They don't have to be perfect. They don't even have to be the same size, but it's going to give the illusion This land has been tilled, and we've got little rows of farmland ready for planting. Just going to keep doing that. Just going back and forth between our little hedge lines. We don't want to draw this in too dark because we're going to add shading over the top of it. In this case, I might even have a field that's right there up next to the edge of the hill, so it can go top there. Might do the same on this one. And remember, as things get far away from you, that means they're going to have less detail. And so it's okay if you mess up a little bit, especially on these ones towards the top.
So now we've got some smudges there. I'm not going to worry about those too much. But I am going to think about the lighting of this hill now. Everything on the left side of the hill is going to be a lot darker than the right. So as we go in, we're just going to go in. I'm going to go in and add little bits of grass to separate out the texture of farmland versus till the wilds. So right now I'm just got this very dark grass that I'm going to add in. And this is going to be both a texture and a shading. So that means as I get across, I'm just going to lighten up. Make my grass still lines there, but just lighter. Still there. And then as I get towards this edge, I might just only add in a few lines just to create some of the faint little aspect of, of grass. And some of these, yes, they'll go over our fields that we drew, and that's just fine. That's what they're there for. It's texture. Overlapping things do make things more interesting, makes pictures a lot more interesting. So it's okay to ruin some of your other work by going over it with something else. Just leave enough of it that we can still see the beauty that you made earlier. Sometimes you actually lose some parts you liked. In which case, it's okay to go back over and erase a little bit of this. Like, I think I want to add a little tree right here, just kind of an old growth tree. Good time to do that, and we can add in some leaves, making sure the left side of the leaves are going to be darker than the right, just to keep the illusion. And my leaves are not very detailed. They're just kind of scribbles in there. Now I've got this hill relatively done. I'm just going to smear a little bit with my finger, making the dark side of the left side of this a little bit darker. And try to leave some space so that the right side has a little bit of highlight of the page. If you actually go over, that's all right. We can go back in with our eraser and just add, tap in some highlights. If we lose too much of our other lines, we'll have to just go back and tap in some of our contour lines back again. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight around this tree just to help define it. Just erasing a little bit around the dark of the tree to let the tree pop out a little bit more, help add some contrast. So remember, contrast is the difference between light and dark. All right, we're hitting the 20 minute mark, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this stream. I'll record another stream for part three. Um, but before we go, last thing I'm gonna admit, mention is all the shading that we're doing is known by the Italian name chiaroscuro. It's a, how we treat light and dark in a picture. And that's going to be one of the main ideas that we're thinking about for this. An atmospheric perspective is chiaroscuro. Just creating lights and darks and you, letting that create our environment. All right. I'll see you in part three.